Hello everyone and welcome to the show. It's the creative blog and article writing show with me Sab in Paris. Here I am for another another week, another bunch of words and it's going to have a rather autumny poetic feel to it today because it's autumn that's full for the Americans and and um, I was digging through my stuff, wondering what I could talk about. And it seemed like a lot of poems were, I don't know, sort of just popping up to me. So it's going to be rather poetic. On this show, which is called The Creative Blog and Article Writing Show, you might be wondering, yeah, but what sort of writing? Well, an article is an article. So it could be just a general sort of informational article, or it could be trying to get a point across. Blogs, on the other hand, could be anything, couldn't they? They could be a poetry blog, it could be a, an article blog where you, you, know, you write about stuff that interests you or that you want to communicate to others. It could be, can you hear me okay? It could be, the microphone's slightly off to the side. It could be um, memes, you know, some people, they, they like me, uh, they create their own memes, which is kind of cool. Or I'm just going to put the microphone down here just in case it's a bit too far off. I hope it doesn't pick up the sound of the uh, computer too much. And... Um, and it could even be a short story, you know, some people write short stories on their blogs. So I don't really have too much of a sort of a, a priori, a priori, how do you say that, as to what the writing's about. It's not about serious stuff, you know, heavy, heavy, long articles or long stories that we just don't have time for that. But apart from that, you know, anything goes, really. Just a bit worried that um, the microphone is now going to be picking up sound from my computer. Uh, by the way, say hello. If you're watching on the replay, say hello. And if you're watching now, say hello. And I'll feel that I'm not alone. Looking at the uh, comments that we got, we got one comment. And <laughs> I'm optimistic because if, if we had one comment, that means there's about, is it 7 billion people minus one who could potentially watch this and comment. So I think that's pretty good going. You know, we've got a lot of potential here. Uh, I said here... Uh, contribute if you can on the theme of changing seasons that was what I had in mind and uh, nobody did on this one it's the creative blog and article writing group which will slowly be getting going I say that every week but I've got to make the effort as well and we had someone who left a comment and it was Rob now oh, you can't see this actually so let me share the screen hello by the way say hello what are your autumn thoughts autumn for us folks in the northern hemisphere and uh, spring for us, for you folks in the Southern Hemisphere. What does that make you think of? Spring or autumn? What does it make you think of? What words come to mind? Send, write a word in the chat when I say to you autumn or spring. What's the word that comes to mind? Let me know. And I've got a hello. I've got a comment from Despina. Hi Despina, it's, uh, it's Sab here. How are you doing? Thanks for popping in. So, uh, Vespina, would you like to share a word? You like words, don't you? Would you like to share a word when I say the word autumn to you? What comes to mind? And the other person that's watching, if I say the word autumn to you, or even spring, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, what does that bring to your mind? Um, that would be interesting to know. I had Rob. Rob actually wrote something. And Rob said, Autumn sunset on the lake. Tourists have gone. Cabin owners have left. Loons have fled southward. All is quiet and peaceful again. So that's a nice, simple little reflection on autumn. And it looks like Americans do understand what the word autumn means because Rob, who is American, North American, used it. So, you know, I'm not exactly sure where the word autumn stands as far as Americans are concerned because for the season they say fall when the leaves fall. And uh, someone, I, I asked people and they said, I said, why, why fall, why fall? And they said something like, well, look, spring, the plants spring up or something like that. Therefore, you know, the leaves fall down in autumn. But I wasn't completely convinced that that justified getting rid of a, a perfectly beautiful and poetic word like autumn and bringing in a rather banal, prosaic word like fall. Uh, so I, I, I'm yet to be, you know, convinced as to why, you know, for a good reason, a good poetic reason why f autumn went out and fall came in. Anyway, Rob used it. Autumn sunset on the lake. Tourists have gone. 
Cabin owners have left. Loons have fled southward. All is quiet and peaceful again. A loon, by the way, doesn't mean a mad person. It's a type of bird, isn't it? Lesbian is saying, hello. Oh, no, she's not. Autumn, fog and yellow leaves. Well, look at some of these yellow leaves here. Oh, my goodness. So I was looking for, uh, for poems. I found a couple of poems of mine. Vespina, have you read any, have you written any poems about autumn or about uh, the seasons or about leaves? Um, so I, I've found a couple that I've written, which I'll read for you. I was looking for, uh, for sort of autumn-y, I've got this book, it's called I Like This Poem. And it's poems chosen by kids. And I found two which related to... One of them is called Two Autumn, but it's ever so long. It's by John Keats, and I think it's here as well. Uh, I think it's here somewhere. But I tend to go for the shorter poems, because, you know, it's... I'm sure Keats' poem is very, very, very wonderful. But it's also very long. Look. <clears throat> Shall I read the first few lines to you and see what you think? Let me know if, if this is something that... Uh, no, you haven't... Despina says that you haven't written a poem about autumn. Well, I think it's about time you did. It's October. You like words. Get a poem written about autumn. <clears throat> maybe I'll do a new one as well. So this is by Keats. And maybe I can find it somewhere here as well. So you can read along with me. Autumn. Autumn song. D.H. Lawrence. Autumn rain. There's a lot of these going by. Keats. See, I've only done the first bit, and that's maybe because the first bit's the most interesting bit. So it says, Seasons of mist and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless. With fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run, to bend with apples the mossed cottage trees, and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells, with a sweet kernel to set budding more, and still more later flowers for the bees, until they think warm days will never cease, for summer has o'erbrimmed their clammy cells. And I won't go on, but uh, you know that gives you an idea of sort of poems from yesteryear, the old days, when you know. They wrote proper poems in those days with proper, you know, contractions like oa instead of over with a little apostrophe for the V and stuff, which was kind of cool. I think I actually did that in one of my poems I'm about to show you. Um, there was another one and it's called The Months. And I'm going to read this because it's a bit shorter and maybe it's a bit more fun as well. These are supposed to be chosen by kids. So theoretically, they're not too heavy. I don't know what kid would choose a, a huge, long Boring poem like that by Keats, but anyway. No, these aren't no, these aren't chosen by kids. Um, I had another book somewhere. Yeah, maybe they are. So this one is called The Months. Let's see what this is. No, I don't know it, so I'm reading it with you. January, cold, desolate, desolate. February, all dripping wet. March, wind ranges. April, changes. Birds sing in tune to flowers of May. And sunny June brings longest day. In scorched July, the storm clouds fly. Lightning torn, August bears corn. September fruit, in rough October, Earth must disrobe her. Stars fall and shoot in keen November, and night is long, and cold is strong in bleak December. Now, I think Christina Rossetti is actually a bit of a fancy poet, you know. I don't know if she is or not. I don't know anything about poetry, really. But uh, I think she's, um, you know, she's not just a... I think she's a proper poet, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Here's one by Emily Bronte. She's kind of uh, well-known as well, isn't she? Let's see what she says. So it says, From a poem for every night of the year. Do you think that she wrote poems for every night of the year? Wouldn't that be amazing? Why don't... You know, would, would any of you consider doing that? Writing a poem for every night of the year? Okay, what does she say? Fall, leaves fall. Die, flowers away. Lengthen night and shorten day. Every leaf speaks bliss to me. Fluttering from the autumn tree. 
I shall smile when wreaths of snow blossom where the rose should grow. I shall sing when nights decay ushers in a drearier day. Now, these are words that any of us could have chosen, aren't they? I, I, I do like to de demystify. She says, Despina says, that's a nice poem. I guess you're saying the months one. Yeah, the months one is nice, isn't it? I'm actually more for, for funny ones or for shorter ones, which are a bit more sort of speak to realness as opposed to highfalutin stuff. Um, that, that one by Emily Bronte, though, I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? When you look at an incredibly famous person from literature and everything and you think, well, I know all of those words. I could have written that. And, uh, and it gives hope, I think. I'm going to... Um, a poem for every lockdown night would be a nice idea. You know, it could even be just uh, a line. Could it be a line or a meme, like a meme? I'm a fan of memes it's when they're original because then that could, it's, they're easy to do, you know, they're fast. They're just a line or two. And that, a meme a day for a year, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I'm going to find one of mine about autumn and uh, see what this one, walk. This one is called Walk, and I think it mentions autumn, which is why I'm kind of including it. I found about two or three with autumn, the theme of autumn, from my stuff. And there's an awful lot of um, screen being used up here. Just going to get rid of uh, get rid of that. And for the rest, that'll have to stay like that. So this one is called Walk, and it's from 1998. So we're talking 22 years ago. And I was walking along the Canal Saint-Martin, and... I wrote this. Walk. Hazy Sunday, friendly fun day, lazy chats and who needs Monday. A favourite place, a cheerful face, a glowing sun and a carefree pace. Lock that heaves midst autumn leaves. We heal the world in woolly sleeves. With hands thrust deep, we walk and weep and talk of things we too shall keep. No need to touch. Our words say much, a love for life and friends and such. Walk the breeze, ah, I think that walk shouldn't be there. The breeze it licks while distant ticks, a timepiece as at life it picks. Memories call, I've been thrown off because of that walk, it shouldn't be there. The breeze it licks while distant ticks, a timepiece as at life it picks. Memories call, Reflections fall, beneath the surface feelings sprawl. We laugh and smile, we gently rile, our heads we turn and pause a while. Now chills set in, goose pimply skin, the cafe nears, we glance and grin. Reflections on a walk along the Canal Saint-Martin from 22 years ago. 22 years ago, I can remember kind of the person. I only met this person once and it was just a walk. We talked about stuff and then we never met again. And, uh, but a poem came from it. So this poem has now become part of my life. Not that I read it for maybe 22 years. And there you go. Uh, this one is called Tree Light Bench. I'm not going to, am I going to go through all these? Tree light bench. No, I won't do that one because it's kind of, it's not really about autumn. Um, autumn's gone. Okay. So this one is about autumn. Well done, Sab, says Despina. Thank you. For the poem or for something else. And uh, autumn's gone. So this was written, this leaf was, was painted by my future ex-wife when she lived in Paris for a while and she was getting into painting. Uh, so this is from... Oh, this is short, look. Oh, it's, an, it's almost a nonsense poem, and it's from 2001. Autumn's gone, leaves fall... Oh, here we go. So I've got to get the rhythm as well. Autumn's gone, leaves fall, they hit soil, they leak oil and slip, slowly grip, growly, pressed flat, they resent that, they seep, lowly, weep, woely, meek, moly, tied, trolly. So it was a kind of a nonsense poem. But it was fun to say, and there's some sort of sense in there, you know. Autumn's gone, leaves fall, they hit soil, they leak oil and slip, slowly grip, growly pressed flat, they resent that, they seep, lowly weep, woely, meek, moly, tied, trolly. 
So I don't know what that's about, but it was kind of fun. Uh, this one is called Winter's Past. I won't read this because it's about winter and you know, I'll probably, uh, yeah, it's about winter and um, I'll save it until we have a theme on winter. You know, I'm thinking of doing something like this each week and maybe concentrating on short things that people can go with. The word came to me just a while ago, night. I think night because night fell. I think night would be a good theme as the nights draw in. We're going to change the clocks this weekend, I think. I think night would be uh, would be a good theme. It says there are many unknown words in that poem. Well, you know what? Because I invented half of them. So don't worry about it, Vespina. Uh, this one is called Autumn's Call. Now, Autumn's Call uh, is a proper poem and it actually goes to the, the tune of a song by Jacques Brel, the famous, incredible French singer, Jacques Brel, which goes something like da 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 and when it goes da 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 that goes with the line I am the leaves that fall I read the autumn's call so if you listen to this track it's called oh god what's it called um Jacques Brel I don't know, something about, it was something about summer. It was, strangely enough, it wasn't autumn, it was summer or something. Because when, the, when the, he sings and the tune is, I wrote, and the trees shake their heads as their golden tears drift. So you see it goes, it fits the tune, but it's not exactly the same. So it's kind of cool, and I won't sing it. And the trees shake their heads as their golden tears drift past sly gazes that shift as they slip by the hands of the ones who have not seen their fears pass them by, shed the years they forgot, felt the surgeon's knife fly. I am the leaves that fall. I read the autumn's call. The cafes close their hearts, invisible inside. Deserted terraces greet empty passages where wind devils abide. Rip through the paper rags, where unseen people hide, far from life's caresses. I am the leaves that fall, I heed the autumn's call. Through tall windows ajar, slide hazy words of ease. Lazy even, slide lazy words of ease. Hazy jokes at the bar, that linger on the breeze. After the restaurant, they take the taxi far, from those who always want and things which do not please. I am the leaves that fall. I feed the autumn's call. The shoes that trail and trace some seconds of a life through scuffed carpet of flesh across my sun-stained face may pause a moment brief to watch the dusk descend as dusk diminutes mesh into the fading light. I am the leaves that fall. I bleed the autumn's call. And that was from 17 years ago, and it was called Autumn's Call. And I was in another time in another place. I think that was written um, as I walked across the Champ de Mars, which is the big garden next to the Eiffel Tower. That was a strange time. I'd come back from Greece, having you know gone there to get married and divorced. Come back, I set the English school up, came back and... Uh, and uh, I was in a sort of hinterland, you know, sort of no man's land, wandering between this and that, wondering what I was doing. And a few poems, about seven poems, fell out that year. And that was one of them. So that was a strange one. Yeah, that's, uh, Amsterdam is one of his most famous songs. <clears throat> so Autumn's Call, that's, a, that's one that really does have autumn in it. Uh, them leaves them. Let me go to another poem. I was looking for best poems, you see, best autumn poems. Um, let's have a look at a random one that comes up. There's a short one. It says, from the remedies. So maybe it's, it's longer than that. From Wimwood, Catherine Towers, into the coppery halls of beech and intricate oak, to be close to the trees as they whisper together. Let fall their leaves and we die for the winter. So 
So do you think that poems should rhyme or not? This is a big question for me. Most of my poems rhyme and I feel that that's kind of the point of poetry. I know a lot of poets, including a lot of modern poets, don't rhyme. <clears throat> to be honest with you, I find a lot of modern stuff a bit like, it's like they've taken stream of consciousness thoughts, like blah, blah, blah. They've chopped them, the lines at odd places, and we're supposed to think it's poetry. That's, you know, that's my view. Maybe it's a bit cynical. I don't know. But I just can't get my head. I don't. If everything rhymes perfectly, then it's a bit too good. You know, it's a bit, it's not rough enough. It's not raw enough. If every line has the same number of syllables, every second line rhymes perfectly. I must admit, I'm kind of a victim to that kind of thinking. Most of my poems do have standard rhymes, which rhyme perfectly. And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily the best poetry because it's too, it's too plain by the rules. Having said that, I do have a problem with stuff which is so oddball, offbeat and just wacky and like trying to be clever that it just doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't touch me. So, you know, I'm just get, I'm just putting that out there. And uh, and then we can look at different types of writing, different types of poetry and see, you know, why you might like it, why you might not. The sort of devices and techniques they've used to get ideas across and to be hard hitting because, you know, poetry, it's. It's a desperate cry from the person writing it to be heard in a way, isn't it? You want to communicate something. And poetry is kind of trying to communicate in words something that can't be communicated in words. <laughs> you know, that's what poetry kind of is. And that's kind of funny, isn't it? You know, here are some words. You won't get it, but have a look at them anyway. You know, you won't get the deepest meaning of what I'm trying to express in a handful of words. How, how could you? It's like if someone says, you know, how are you? And they say, I'm not feeling too good. But in fact, their cat's just died. You know, I mean, I'm not feeling too good doesn't express how you feel if your cat's just died, right? So words are, having said that, having said that, poetry can communicate something. Yes, it's words, but it can communicate something which is almost over and above. Because if you if your cat's just sorry if your cat's just died by the way, but if your cat's just died, and a poem is written about that, but it doesn't mention a cat, it mentions I don't know, off the top of my head, it mentions oh I'm going to get emotional already, it mentions the empty bowl you know, that isn't touched, the food that is lying there, the ball that is no longer played with you know this wow. Shh. You see, I even started get, getting emotional and my, my, I haven't even got a cat. So poetry can both be a, a sad attempt to actually express very strong emotions, but it can also go further, further than those emotions. I started getting upset, getting emotional, imagining a poem for someone whose cat had died where it didn't even mention a cat. It just had toys which were no longer being played with so it's a strange beast poetry it's a very strange beast a very powerful one uh, there's uh, John Keats um, long thingy again <laughs> uh, what else is there anything else here um, so uh, I'm thinking of night as the theme for next time what do you think of that do you think night would be an inspiring well that's long an inspiring thing um, what have we got there? I don't know what that's about. Sonnet. Shakespeare wrote a sonnet about something, about 73. So let's see what uh, Shakespeare had to say for himself. Uh, that time of year thou mayst in me behold. So it's by Shakespeare. So it's supposed to be, it, theoretically, it should be amazing. But that doesn't mean you have to think it's amazing. And it's from a long, long time ago. Uh, so, you know, there's a couple of you watching. Do say hello, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I'm just thinking, if you were to write something about autumn or about night, the night falling, the clocks changing, would that inspire you? Would you, would you prefer a meme, 
uh, a short story, uh, an article about it, um, an anecdote, a poem? What would be the, the way in which you would like to express yourself in words about the theme of autumn, the clocks changing or night? Uh, you know, because uh, for each person they have their own, their own preferred way. So this is William Shakespeare. Let's listen to Billy, shall we? Billy Boy. That time of year thou mayst in me behold, when yellow leaves or none or few do hang, upon those boughs which shake against the cold, bear ruined choirs where late the sweet birds sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day, as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away, death's second self that seals up all the rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire, that on the ashes of his youth doth lie, as the deathbed whereupon, as the deathbed whereupon it must. So there's supposed to be ten syllables in the sonnet. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to find them. As the deathbed whereupon it must, as the deathbed whereupon it must expire, consumed by that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love that well, that well which thou must leave ere long. So the bard uh, in fine form there. <laughs> I didn't understand half of it. It's the sort of thing you would have to analyse and uh, go through and, you know, check the words you weren't sure of. A few of the words are kind of Old English. And he also uses uh, the device of taking out a, a, a vowel, like... Ooh, uh, like the, oh God. okay, I've just um, done something which I shouldn't have. I don't know what you can see anymore. Okay, so he takes out vowels, like in ed, words that end in ed. It was quite the thing to actually take those out. And um, so ruined, actually ruined stays ruined, but in some cases it makes the word shorter. I mean, I don't know why you would take the, the E out. You know, it says bear ruined. It's not as though you say bear ruined. You say bear ruined anyway, don't you? Um, there's another one there. Is that consumed? You see the, the third last line, it says consumed. I don't know why you would take the E out unless the E made it longer. Would you say consumed? Consumed by that which it was nourished by. In that case, it would be longer. But it's, you don't say consumed. Maybe they did in the old days. Um, so maybe you would say ruined, I don't know. And there's, there's lots of old words, which might be amusing, you know, especially if you're not, uh, if you're not English speaking. Things like thou, going upwards from the bottom line, you've got thou, air, like it means before long, I think, something to do with time, thy, thou is like you, and thy, your, um, doth is the old word for does. In in me thou ceased. That means in me you see. Doth again does take away does fadeth, uh, as after sunset fadeth in the west. So you could actually take words from Shakespeare sonnets, and put them into yours, and you end up sounding like Shakespeare. Could be quite cool. You know, there's the old form of um, see in thou ceased. Is it, that, is it that you had to change the verbs in a different way than we do now? I think English has become simplified over the years. <clears throat> and that's not even talking about American English. Plums. Ah, this is more relaxing, isn't it? Hello, Yoriska. Um, Shakespeare was my first love when I was 10. I was trying to read with my elementary English back then. You know, the simplified Shakespeare, where they've kind of dumbed it down and, well, to be honest, he used some words that we just don't use today and it's almost impossible to understand. But if you dumb it down too much, it sounds a bit sort of strange. Uh, yeah, but Shakespeare's a challenge. It's a real challenge. And there's other, there's meanings, of course. There's meanings which we don't have anymore. So you need to understand what the meanings were. So Yaruska, I'm, I'm um, just reading a few poems, actually, including a couple of mine. Yaruska, tu aimes écrire la poésie, Yaruska? Qu'est-ce que tu aimes faire Tu aimes écrire sur les photos Ce serait bien si tu, uh, tu écrivais quelques mots sur le prochain thème. Prochain thème, ça va être la nuit, night. 
So there may be photos of night in the photo group. Et les mots sur la nuit uh, dans ce groupe. So plums. I like it when a poem is about something really solid that you can hold and get your teeth into. You know, it's a, a common everyday thing which we make bigger than it really is. So this is a poem about plums. Let's see what she says. When their time comes, they fall, without wind, without rain. They sweep through the tree's muslin in a slow fermentation. Daily the low sun warms them in a late love that is sweeter than summer. In bed at night, we hear heartbeat or fruit of fruitful. The secretive slugs crawl home to the burst honeys are found. In the morning, mouth on mouth, inseparable. We spread patchwork counterpanes for a clean catch. Baskets fill, never before such harvest, such a hunter's moon burning. The hawthorns drunk on syrups that are richer by night. When spiders pitch tents in the wet grass. This is longer than, than I thought, actually. This morning, the red sun it's, is opening like a rose. On our white wall, prints there the fishbone shadow of a fern. The early blackbirds fly, guilty from a dawn hall of fallen fruit. We too breakfast on sweetnesses. Soon plum trees will be bone, grown delicate with frost's formalities. Their black angels will tear the sky. I'm never sure. You know, she, 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 you see she has the lines run on sometimes. I'm never sure whether to pause at the end of the line or to keep going. I think you're supposed to pause, so the rhythm, because if you look at the, this one, this, um, this verse here. The early back blackbirds fly, guilty from a dawn hall of frozen feet, of, frozen, of fr fallen fruit. We too breakfast on sweetnesses. You kind of need to pause at the end, otherwise it becomes the early blackbirds fly guilty from a dawn hall of fallen fruit. We too breakfast on sweetnesses. It's not poetry, is it? The early blackbirds fly guilty from a dawn hall of frozen feet. Of fr <laughs> Why am I saying frozen feet? It's fallen fruit. We too breakfast on sweetnesses. That's nice. I like it. And there's a lot of beautiful country imagery, imagery in there, isn't there? Yariska says, we, oui. so that means we, oui, you're inspired by the idea of night, or we, oui, you write poetry, tu écris les poèmes, ou tu es inspiré par la, la dit de la nuit, tu me dis. Angela, hello Angela, how are you doing, how's your knee? Angela, you could write a poem about knees, how about that? Or, failing that, something about night, I think night is going to be our next theme. So, thanks for saying hello. Um, uh, so... Night. Give me um, a word when I say night to you. What is the word? No. Let's do, let's go better than night. Give me a sentence. A sentence which comes when I say the word night to you. What immediately pops out of your head? And if you want to make it a little bit poetic, feel free. Um, I, I kept saying frozen feet <laughs> instead of fallen fruit. And uh, Vespina's theory is maybe your feet are cold now that you're talking. Yeah, I don't know why my feet would be cold as a consequence of talking. They're not, they're okay, they're okay. Better, Sab, better. It's getting better, oh, I hope so. Good, good. All right, so are you inspired by the word night? And if so, or what about the clocks going back? Could that be a fun one? I'm imagining clocks going back, it's like we're cheating time. You know, spring forward, fall back, cheating time. Because you put the clocks back, or the clocks forward, you're not actually changing time. This is kind of our illusion that time is actually a thing at all. It's not really, is it? And yet we think we're putting back time or we've got an extra hour. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of silly, isn't it? Oui, j'aime la poésie. C'est bien que tu aimes la poésie. Uh, so let's see if I can find another poem for you. Um, and then we'll... Um... So I did this one, which is about uh, a walk. And this one, which was about, I didn't do that one, I won't do that. It's a nice poem, this one, the Tree Light Bench. Um, them Leaves Them, which was a kind of... Uh... Oh my goodness. 
Am I actually going to read that? It actually mentions autumn leaves, but I think that's a little bit too long. I won't, I won't, uh, I won't hit you with that one. Call of the wild wolf. Wolf. What's that about? He said I just went through a few uh, to see if any of them were interesting. And uh, poetry. Uh, bonfire night. Okay. See if you can guess what this is about. It's called Bonfire Night, which is something that in, in England, Britain, we have a at the end on the 31st. No, it's the 5th of November. We have Bonfire Night in England, at least. And a bonfire is a big fire outside. And we burn the guy. The guy is an effigy, like a model. It's normally old clothes stuffed with paper and things of someone who tried to blow up the houses of Parliament, make them explode. And I wrote something about bonf called Bonfire Night. And it goes like this. What do you think the subject is? It's bonfire night in La Bonlieu. That means the suburbs. Boys play with matches. Molotov cocktails. Penny for a guy. Time's run out. Down in one. A light. And we might damn the sun. And flicks about. Flicks are fr is French for police. Let's write the sky. We're of nightingales. Joy's singing in snatches. Remember the fin de sombre. Uh, that's a bit obscure. I've actually got this um, rhyming scheme where actually you see it's bonfire night in La Bonne That means it's, it's time for lighting fires in the suburbs. And this was after there had been some riots in the suburbs and they like uh, setting fire to, to cars. Um, Despina says in Greek we say black is the night in the mountains when someone is ignorant. So this is what first came to mind. That's amazing. Black is the night in the mountains when someone is ignorant. Interesting. In French they say um, la nuit tous les chats sont gris, which means at night all cats are grey, which means something like uh, <clears throat> I don't know. There's a, there's a deep meaning to it, obviously. It's a metaphor. Or a, um, I think it means that when you take away colours it could be colours of skin. I don't think that's what it was originally. You take away colours, we're all the same. We're all the same underneath. I think that's one of the meanings of it. I like that one though. Black is the night in the mountains when someone is ignorant. <laughs> and uh, we are cheating time. We are cheating time. Yeah, I don't, we're, we're playing, aren't we? We're playing with the clocks. But I think we tend to think that we can do more with time than we, we really can. Yeah, so this poem I actually played around with um, making the, the top line rhyme with the bottom line. Did I? No. Bon Dieu, décembre. That doesn't rhyme. Matches. Boys play with matches. Joys singing in snatches. Molotov cocktails. We are of nightingales. That kind of, we are of nightingales. Nightingales are a bird, so it's like we are, we are one with the sky. Penny for a guy. Let's write the sky. Time's run out and flicks about. A light, damn. A light, we might. Down in one. Damn the sun, a light, we might, and. So that was playing around with words, which is, which is always fun to do. And, uh, and that's it. This is a random one. I just saw it and I, I'll read it. Why not? So here's a, here's a random poem. And it was inspired by this picture, which doesn't really blow up any bigger. I saw this. It was this guy on the train. This is years ago now. And uh, with his bag and he had his, he had, he looked like a homeless guy. Like he, he had homeless, hope, homeless person's bags, you know, full of stuff. And he was on the train. He put his jacket over his head. And <clears throat> there he was. From 2001, that's uh, nine years ago. Time flies. Well, it's an illusion, but time seems to fly, doesn't it? But you know, one great thing about, about writing is that I can now look back and I think nine years ago, where was I? What was I doing? Well, I can tell you one of the things I was doing was writing this poem. And for what it's worth, at least it's better than nothing, you know, and it's a record. And I called it My Retreat. It's funny, I'm planning a Paris retreat now. I don't know when to do them because with the COVID and stuff, <laughs> I was thinking of April next year. But what if people can't go out in April? So I'm thinking of just planning them anyway and kind of saying you can book up in advance, but we'll only do it when it's safe to come you know i won't book a hotel everyone can book their own accommodation so that's flexible 
and um, and the retreat itself is going around Paris, having a powerful sort of transformation experience or or something like that. So my retreat, it's called. And uh, this is what I wrote, short and sweet. My retreat. No one seeks to meet and greet, dis discreet between the reeking seats. My meek retreat, a bite to eat, would make my meagre plight complete. A welcome treat beyond the weekly fighting feet, beneath my tweedy sheath, a sneaky life replete, far from the feckless street. Guess what rhyme I was playing with there, folks? It sounds like a load of gobbledygook, but in fact, each line does have a sense. And, you know, it may be that there are some interesting words there for you. Now that I've read it, I kind of can see, looking back, the rhyme. You know, it's not too difficult. No one seeks to meet and greet, discreet between the reeking seats. My meek retreat, a bite to eat, would make my meagre plight complete. A welcome treat beyond the weekly fighting feet, beneath my tweedy sheath. A sneaky life replete, far from the feckless street. Wow, I, my tongue gets like you know, twisted into all sorts of strange forms trying to get that right. It's kind of really good fun, isn't it? Bite, plight, seat. I was playing with the rhyme seat and the rhyme plight and the some not, you know, meager. Eat, meager. It's complete. Beneath. So there's there's... It's not always eat, seats, greet. It could be um, meager, complete, well, complete rhymes, beneath. Uh, so there's a lot of rhymes and there's a lot of the same syllable, but not the same one on the end, which makes it not a, not a proper rhyme, but it just keeps the, the rhythm going. So it's playing with E and I. You've got, and also with T, there's a lot of T's in there, aren't there? Weekly, Tweedy, Sheath, Sneaky. Oh, that was fun. You know, looking back on that, that was really good fun. I mean, I, I reckon in, in Greek, I mean, you must be able to do, can you do similar things or is it just completely different? You couldn't do a similar type of thing in, in Greek. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Okay, well, time is getting on and um, we've, been, we've been together for quite a while. Uh, I was just wondering if, um, if there's anything really profound that I could read you from... Uh, Something like the, the hums of poo. Would that be a good one to finish on? Uh, well, he says, how sweet to be a cloud. Is that a sort of autumny one? You know, Winnie the Pooh, who uh, last week I looked at uh, the, um, the, the Taoism explained by Pooh. Well, what, he was kind of on my mind. So how sweet to be a cloud, you know, because he had this famous... Uh, story where he went up with a balloon to try and get honey from the bees and he was hoping that they would mistake him for a cloud and I think he kind of got stuck in midair and with nothing better to do he ended up making up a little cloud hum. Floatingly, how sweet to be a cloud, floating in the blue, every little cloud always sings aloud. How sweet to be a cloud, Floating in the blue, it makes him very proud to be a little cloud. How sweet to be a cloud, floating in the blue. So incredibly simple. You know, poems, I'm going to find a simple poem for you just to finish with. Because sometimes they, we make them so complicated and fancy, but sometimes the simplest are the best. And I did a couple of, uh, I've done really simple poems in my time. Just trying to work out where they would be. Poetry. I'll go to poetry. You know, literally four-liners. Nonsense poems, like on a Maltese or on coffee. I think I've got one about coffee somewhere, but God knows where it is. It's literally four lines on coffee. Oh, God, now I say that, I'm never going to find it. Um, I'm not sure if it, was a, if it was a later piece or if it was an early one. I've got a feeling it was actually a little bit later. I'm going to just check out the, uh... yeah, so what would you write on, on coffee? Four lines. I don't drink coffee at the moment, but I must admit, I, um, I gave in on my amazing diet and I started eating ice cream yesterday. It'll stop, it'll stop, but uh, I did give in 
and uh, wrote and ate some ice cream. So just to see what it was like. And I had diarrhea for the next uh, day. So I'm thinking, you know, Odes to a Malteser. That's a four liner. Let's see if I can find one more. You know Maltesers? They're those little chocolate snack uh, sweet things. I'm going to try and find coffee as well because this is... Oh, there's an ode to a Malteser. Hang on. So that can go. That can go. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Sometimes I realise that... Okay, these are... I think it was just called coffee. Talk amongst yourself. This is exciting um, radio, isn't it? Words, Dial of Dad, Grim Ghosts. This is all heavy stuff. I'm looking for something so incredibly simple to finish on. And you know four liners are actually good practice, like limericks, because you can do them very, very quickly and get them out there. And it's like you've written a poem. And it's also like memes. You have to say the minimum. You have to say the most heart-hitting thing. Croissant. I've got a feeling that's actually uh, a bit longer. Uh, you have to say the, the minimum, sorry, the maximum amount of impact in the smallest space possible, like four lines. So I'm not finding it there. Uh, so a couple more, try and find it. If I can't, never mind. My coffee. All right, we're in business. Okay, so here's mon croissant. So this is croissant, you know, those lovely French things. So here's my, uh, this one says, lovely, I'm beginning to appreciate poo as I grow up. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can go as far as you, as you want to go, you know, in terms of profundity. So this is about, my, about croissant. I love croissant. The moon is a croissant, toasting in the sun, or melty, dribbly, holy cheese for spreading on my bum. The stars are grapes and olives, Sparkling juicy orbs, the planets melons, figs and dates, my greedy tum absorbs. And planet Earth, my staple food, my bread, my rice and pasta. She feeds me up with all that's fine. But what else rhymes except rasta? Disaster? Alabaster? So that's my sort of ode to a croissant. And um, then there was this other one on Ode to Malteser, those little chocolate sweets. Oh, little ball so small and brown, it's in your flavour that I drown. And when the packet comes around, I'm damned if I can turn it down. So that's Ode to Malteser and one more for luck. My coffee. You ready for this? It's a killer. My coffee. My brown coffee is nice and strong. Its warming taste lasts very long. Without my nice, strong, long coffee, how grim and grey my life would be. It's profound stuff, people. I'm sure you agree. So, I will leave it at that. That was kind of fun, kind of nice. Thank you for watching. If you watched the replay, thank you for watching the replay. Leave a comment and I will comment right back at you. And I think I will make night the next theme as I said and we'll see what we can come up with. So do try to write something in the writing group and um, we'll see what happens next. Okay, uh, bye everybody. It's been nice being here and I'll talk to you again same time, same place next week, all going according to plan, which of course things don't. I'll just wait a second if you want to say bye-bye. It's always nice to to say that. So I'm going now. I'm going. You can say bye-bye. Thank you. You are sweet. Sweet. Yeah, I like Maltesers. Yes. My brown coffee is nice and strong. Its warming taste lasts very long. Without my nice, strong, long coffee, how grim and grey my life would be. That's fun. You know, it's, it's almost reassuring that you don't have to do anything heavy and meaningful, and it can still be a, a fun little poem. And kids will like them better than the heavy, meaningful, deep and meaningful nonsense that adults try and write. So bye-bye, get your writing caps on, get writing, get scribbling, join the blog and article group, write about the night, write about the night right now, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.